Hi, I'm Caitlin, and welcome to video 8 of the Quick Start series for the Analog Discovery 2. In this video, we'll go over the spectrum analyzer. Spectrum analyzers take complex measurements in order to help you understand what's going on with your signals. Almost all electronic systems generate noise and are susceptible to external interference. The spectrum analyzer tool on the Analog Discovery 2 can help you pinpoint both internal and external trouble spots and help you determine what fundamental frequencies are in your signals. You're probably used to looking at signals in the time domain, but you can also view them in the frequency domain, with amplitude on the y-axis and frequency on the x-axis. This way you can see the strength of each frequency within your signal. Spectrum analyzers take measurements of each frequency throughout your data acquisition. It does this many times over, so you'll see a fluctuating image with spikes at each frequency that makes up your signal. The spectrum analyzer can be accessed through channel 1 and channel 2 of the oscilloscope. To open the Spectrum Analyzer, click Spectrum in the navigation bar. On the menu bar, you have File, Control, View, and Window. The File menu allows you to create a new Spectrum Analyzer instance, load an existing configuration, save a new configuration, export the data, or close the window. The data can be exported as an image, CSV, text, or TDMS file. The Control window allows you to run continuously, single or stop the run. The view window allows you to view the time domain measurements, components, and cursors. The Windows menu allows you to open any windows and waveforms. To open the tool in a new window, click this button. Below the menu bar are the options for running the spectrum analyzer. You can start a single run or a continuous run. Frequency range automatically adjusts, but you can set it with the frequency range dropdown. Alternatively, you can use the start and stop dropdowns to set the x-axis. You can choose any value between 0 and 50 MHz. Resolution allows you to enter a value in Hertz. If you click on the green down arrow, more settings will appear. Data can be displayed in linear or logarithmic scale, and in addition to setting the x-axis scale by start and stop, you can set the center and span. You can enter any value between positive and negative 50 Hertz in span, and any value between 0 and almost 50 MHz in the center value. You can also change the number of frequency bins and adjust the frequency resolution bandwidth. If you click the gear next to the previous settings, you can also change the algorithm to Chirp Z Transform or the default Fast Fourier Transform. You can also edit the sample update frequency by entering a value between 1 milliseconds and 10 seconds, or choose maximum. On the right-hand side of the plot are settings for magnitude, expanded channel options, trace 1 and 2, and extra traces. In the magnitude box, you can adjust the units and range of the y-axis. The top sets the maximum y-value. The range sets the scale of the y-axis, and the units can be changed. You can enter a value between positive and negative 100 decibels into the top, and between 0 and 200 decibels into the range. You can also edit the reference value. You can change the source of trace 1 or 2, as well as the type of sample. For instance, with sample, the trace is updated after each sweep and with peak holds continuous, the maximum values for each VN from consecutive sweeps are held. For more information on these, click on the Help tab in Waveforms 2015. The Count or Weight box specifies the count or weight for the selected averaging methods. Clicking on the gear in each trace box will open up additional settings, including name, label, window type, and the option to export data. Using the drop-down called Add Trace, you can add additional traces with different settings. Channel Options expands to give you additional options for Channel 1, Channel 2, and Triggering. You can change the offset, range, attenuation, and sample mode of each channel, and set up manual or external triggering. An external trigger or any of the waveforms included tools can be used as a trigger source. Now let's go through an example. Open the waveform generator by clicking the WaveGen button in the navigation bar in the main window. Click on square and set the frequency to 20 kHz. We can use a spectrum analyzer to view the sine waves at various frequencies that make up a square wave. We're going to connect the waveform generator output to the spectrum analyzer input by connecting the positive end of channel 1 of the oscilloscope to waveform generator 1 and the negative end of channel 1 of the oscilloscope to the ground wire. With the wires connected, Click Run on the Waveform Generator and Run on the Spectrum Analyzer. We'll need to make some adjustments so that we can see things more clearly. First, click on the checkbox on Channel 2 to remove it from view. Set your center frequency to 20 kHz and span to 40 kHz. You can see a clear spike at 20 kHz and then a bunch of noise. This makes sense since the square wave frequency is at 20 kHz. 
Now let's expand the view to see what's really happening. Set the center to 500 kHz and span to 1 MHz. Now you can see some of the component frequencies. Let's see what frequencies are the strongest. You should be able to tell from the image, but if you play with the start and stop values or span value, you will see peaks that won't be apparent with different resolution. To see what exact frequencies are present, click on the view and choose components. Sometimes it can be helpful to pick a different sampling method than just continuously sampling. For example, peak holds continuous removes the noise and can help capture small peaks that could get lost in the noise. Now you know some of the basics of the spectrum analyzer. Our next video will cover the power supplies. Subscribe to stay up to date to Digital Products and Services. Thanks for watching.